Hello. <laughs> I'm Krista Thomason. I'm from the philosophy department. Um, when uh, Val asked me to do this, I thought this was a, a really great honor, and um, I'm really happy to be here. And when you start uh, thinking about what you're going to say in situations like this, I think the, uh, the, your natural tendency is to go with give advice, must give advice, right? And I, I think the reason that we must give advice is because we, uh, the, we're sort of on the other side of a journey that you guys are getting ready to start. And so we've sort of been through it, and we know what is going to happen and what's, what to expect. And um, a lot of the knowledge that we have about that experience is hard won. And uh, I, we just really don't want you guys to make the same mistakes we did, for the most part. That's really why, you know, where this sort of good intention advice comes from. Um, and so I started thinking, well, how am I going to craft this advice? I can, there's a million sort of very general things I can say. Um, but then I thought, I don't know, I, people need to hear different things because people are coming from different places. Um, but I can't anticipate where everybody's coming from. So then I started to think, well, what would I need to hear? Like, what did I need to hear when I was in your position and I was sitting in those chairs? And so I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll write a letter to my past self. And maybe the things that I would tell myself are things that might help you. And if it's not, that's okay, but maybe you'll, something will echo. So here's an open letter to my former self. Dear past Krista, there are a million things I could tell you about your future, most of which you probably won't believe. First of all, there's this little liberal, art, liberal arts college in Pennsylvania called Swarthmore. I know, you've never heard of it, but you'll get a job there. Right now, you can't even imagine living outside of North Carolina, and you're thinking, wait, do they even have sweet tea in Pennsylvania? <laughs> Trust me, you're going to love it. And not to freak you out more, but it'll be the fifth state you live in, so by the time you get there, moving will be no big deal. The reason you end up there is because of the experiences you have in college. I know right now you are all set to go, and you are really excited. You are sure you are going to major in theater because you love it and because you've been acting your whole high school career. Here's the thing. Uh, you're not going to end up in theater. You're going to sign up for a bunch of theater classes in your first semester, and then you're going to discover that you hate it. <laughs> you hate the demanding hours. You hate the people in your classes. <laughs> You hate the ugly, competitive culture of the program. Uh, quitting will feel bad and good at the same time, and you'll have to completely rethink your life plans. So what are you going to do instead? <laughs> well, you're going to sign up for a class called Introduction to Philosophy. You do it on a whim, because you've never heard of philosophy, and so you figure you might as well try something really new you're gonna fall in love with it immediately. And I mean like in love with it. It will make you feel at home in the world. It will quiet a restlessness inside you that you did not know how to tame. It will feel full of magic and wonder and awe. And you'll think, how did I ever live without this? But philosophy won't be the only thing you learn. You're taking Latin in high school, and you keep taking it in college. I know, right? <laughs> it turns out you love it. Taking Latin will lead you to take ancient Greek. Then you'll take ancient history and mythology and ancient architecture, and before you know it, you're a double major in philosophy and classics. You'll take an English class called Responding to Literature, where you'll read Pride and Prejudice paired with Bridget Jones' Diary. You'll take a natural history course where you have class in the woods around campus and you'll learn all the native flora and fauna. You'll be able to identify trees by their leaf shape even years later. You won't love every single class you take. It turns out sociology and physics are not really for you. But the life of learning that you live while you're in college will awaken something inside you and that thing will never go back to sleep. 
you're gonna make a lot of mistakes, like lots of them. See, it turns out you're what they call a first-generation college student. Since your parents didn't go to college, there's a whole lot that you'll have to figure out on your own. And because you think asking for help is a sign of weakness, you'll learn all that stuff the hard way. You'll turn a paper in at the last possible second, and your professor will give you this look, that look that says, oh, come on, Krista, you know better. You'll never forget that look, and you'll never turn a paper in late again. You'll have a busy week, and you'll phone in your Latin homework one day. Then your Latin professor will ask you to translate in class, and he'll lecture you on your very crappy translation in front of everyone. And it'll hurt a lot at the time, but you'll realize that he pushed you because he knew you could do better. Look, you do a lot of dumb stuff, okay? But guess what? It's not the end of the world. I mean, I'm here from the future, right? So you made it through. You'll learn, you'll get over it, and you'll move on. You'll meet people from all walks of life, and it will be the best thing about college. You will learn very quickly that everyone you meet is more than their list, more than their religion, more than their hometown, more than their politics, more than their race, more than their gender. You'll learn that people are flawed, and people are wonderful, and that most people are both at the same time. You're going to misjudge some people. You'll meet a girl who lives in your dorm, and you'll think she's arrogant and fake. It turns out she's a first-gen girl from a blue-collar background, just like you. And it turns out she's doing the same thing you're doing, covering up her insecurities with a bunch of bravado. She'll be in your wedding, and 20 years later, you'll still be friends. You'll take a philosophy class with this one professor, and you'll think he is the most boring person ever, and you won't do well in his class. <laughs> But you'll take another class with him because it's on a topic you like, and then you'll realize he's actually not boring. It's that you didn't get a chance to really see him at his best, and if we're honest, he didn't exactly see your best that semester either. He'll become your mentor. He'll encourage you to apply to graduate school in philosophy. And when you write your first book, you'll send him a copy. So, now I've told you a little bit about your future. Here's some advice. You probably won't take it because you're bullheaded and stubborn. I'd tell you to work on that, but honestly, it turns out to be one of the things that helps you become successful. But, so like, I don't know, tone it down a little maybe? <laughs> anyway, here's the advice. You don't have to prove yourself. You're worried that you're not smart enough and that you don't belong here, but you do. The world is bigger than you could ever imagine. Make yourself bigger so that you can fit into it. Don't try to make the world smaller so that it fits into you. People are more complicated than you think. Don't simplify them just because it makes things easier. When you think you've got it all figured out, you don't. And when you admit that you don't have it all figured out, that's when you really start to learn. Don't be afraid to be who you are, but don't be afraid to change either. Because when the four years is over, you are not gonna be the same person you are now. And that's the point. Love your future self. Thank you.